We are constructing a railroad to space, so let's take a trip into the future and consider how people will navigate the universe then. The Lunar Gateway Space Station is powered by electric ion engines, which produce propulsion by electrically charging a gas. Kinetic launchers, which use spin launch to launch tiny, unmanned spacecraft into low Earth orbit, are also in use. Humanity observes as ever larger space buildings are constructed, rockets are launched, expandable and inflatable payloads are deployed, and entire space stations are launched all at once. SpaceX starts launching the fundamental components of their orbital fuel station while the International Space Station deorbits, burns up in the Earth's atmosphere, and crashes into the ocean. As orbital refueling technology develops, the depot will soon house mechanical spare components for spacecraft in addition to cryogenically storing fuel. Enabling spacecraft to be maintained and repaired in Earth's orbit without ever having to touch down thus begins classifying spacecraft into two groups. Those with additional heat shielding for launches and landings on Earth fuel holding the construction of SpaceX's fuel station also tests working prototypes of the Starship Mark II, which is twice as wide and has four times as much internal space as the first generation Starship and is large enough to be a space station itself. It has air brakes, parachutes, and those that are specifically designed for the vacuum of space. The first rocket fuel produced on the moon is refueled at the Artemis moon base by refueling a spacecraft. The first test of a small-scale nuclear fusion spaceship that generates energy without leaving behind radioactive waste isotopes of hydrogen serve as fuel. A nuclear fusion reaction requires an environment with extremely high temperatures and pressure, similar to that found in the sun's core. The gravitational pull of the sun causes the hydrogen to be compressed together in the sun's core, resulting in nuclear fusion. Hydrogen is present in the atmospheres of many planets and on asteroids. A few kilograms of fuel could power the typical home on Earth for about nine years. For a spacecraft, fusion power will cut future travel times in half, while an advanced ultra-high-energy fusion engine will propel a spacecraft to Mars and back. The fuel is heated into a plasma on the spacecraft, then squeezed using either magnetic confinement in the form of large electromagnets or by inertial confinement using lasers and pistons. Elon Musk will become the first space admiral in the year 2035, which will be remembered as the first great crossing because the trip to Mars will only take 80 days rather than the usual months due to a perihelic opposition. A number of starships, a colonial fleet, and an armada will be waiting in parking orbit around Earth. On Earth, other solar sail spacecraft are powered by merely the sun's light, while the Starshot Alpha Centauri program launches a swarm of 1,000 miniature spacecraft to collect data using solar sails. People on Earth wonder when they will see the first human space sailors and even space pirates. Phobos, a moon of Mars, is the site of the first crewed voyage. People on Earth are shown concept art of massive space structures showing multi-kilometer trusses, skeletons of spacecraft, new age telescopes, and space station worlds. Humanity begins to daydream of limitless sized space structures as massive beams are printed and knitted together by a red wire Arcana spacecraft, enabling structures to be built like spiders larger than any rockets can carry into space. An announcement is made on Earth stating that humanity has now become a multi-planetary species. Middle schools are now teaching space law and mechanics, and a language called Space Creole is already emerging. Words from different languages on Earth are being combined to describe the novel and alien experiences of living in space. There is a greater need for asteroid defenses because there are now three human settlements on Earth, the Moon and Mars. Tests are being conducted on implanting thrusters onto asteroids as a way of rerouting them. Another test mission is known as Gravity Tractor 1. AI engineers have trained the first AI capable of managing solo an entire spacecraft. It is able to carry out missions autonomously, setting its own goals objectives, and is able to create new missions of its own. The largest rotating spaceport is being built, creating what some have dubbed a garden in space. 
The wheel-like structure can accommodate 450 people, including scientists and visitors, and has a rotating outer ring that creates artificial gravity. 2,500 starships leave Earth's orbit for the second great crossing in 2051, and thousands of people land on Mars and Jupiter's moon. Humans are able to make weekly commutes by boarding shuttles to space stations where they work and returning home on the weekends while Ganymede becomes a target for crude exploration on Earth. Even the public shuttles have schedules for each day. The first lunar space race, known as the Slingshot Race, is conducted as other spacecraft observe from their own spacecraft in orbit around the Earth. Solo one-person spacecraft are used for the first trips of space tourists. An onboard artificial intelligence controls every crucial flight and support system. The AI is connected to the ground and given permission to fly by the AI space flight control. DIY Autonomous Spacecrafts, or DAWs, are what some of these space explorers are working on creating on their own utilizing an open source AI piloting technology. Studies are being conducted by mad scientists to see if it is possible to create a spacecraft that is mostly built of chitin, cellulose, or bone. These boats are referred to as bioships while this is happening, a network of quantum computers creates artificial general intelligence. Soon, this super AI will be launched in spacecraft and sent across the galaxy as data. At that point, there will be planets that are only inhabited by AI. An asteroid is visited by a primitive mission to test optical mining. The asteroid is now under human control and has been placed in orbit above Mars for larger scale mining. Large reflectors focus sunlight, digging and collecting materials inside a containment bag. This type of propulsion does not require any propellant, allowing for interstellar travel. A test spacecraft uses a stack of piezoelectric crystals as fuel. These crystals are typically used on Earth for sonar. An electric field causes them to have tiny changes to their resting masses, making them a little lighter and a little heavier and generating momentum. The antimatter particles are created on Earth from ultra-high-speed collisions made at enormous particle accelerators like the newly built Ultra-Large Hadron Collider. It is also found in bananas. A few milligrams of antimatter are used to propel a spacecraft all the way to Mars, producing about 10 billion times the energy compared to traditional chemical combustion rockets. The interstellar ramjet is a development of the nuclear fusion engine that harvests and burns hydrogen floating in space instead of using the spacecraft's onboard fuel. An electrically generated magnetic field at the front of the spacecraft acts as an invisible scoop and funnel that collects the hydrogen floating in space. Travel routes are mapped based on the presence of ricochets. Images of the Horse Nebula show that interstellar space can contain a lot of gas, especially in areas where stars are still forming and surrounding young stars. A ramjet may travel to the Milky Way Center in 21 years of ship time, which is equivalent to 45 years on Earth due to relativistic effects, while supercooled hydrogen is visible in the dark molecular cloud near the front of the renowned horse's head. A habitat buried 100 meters deep inside a mined, hollowed-out rotating asteroid is shown in plans for the Inter-Asteroid Space Station. Once an asteroid has been mined, the shell can be used as a structure acting as an ecological shell, protecting its inhabitants from radiation. Humans have mastered the taking over of asteroids, landing their spacecraft and implanting thrusters to maneuver them, laying the foundation for the next phase of asteroid manipulation. Around the moon Ganymede of Jupiter lies a space station. Being the largest moon in the solar system and having a subterranean ocean and magnetic field of its own, it serves as humanity's most primitive outpost in the darkest part of space. A spacecraft and Aneurolink brain chip combine to form a neural ship. First Alcubire warp engine testing begins, cutting travel times from years to hours. Similar to how a person would push the water behind them in a swimming pool so that the water in front and even the leaves floating on the water move towards them, a warp drive expands the space behind the spacecraft and squeezes the space in front creating a bubble that allows the spacecraft to surf over the fabric of space-time. With a warp engine, there are no relativistic effects. 
Missions are completed quickly after returning to Earth, where both the ship's crew and residents mature at the same rate. Replicants are being sent to other planets. These self-replicating microbots are programmed for terraforming and gradually converting a planet's atmosphere. They use the resources on the planet to self-replicate and multiply built with high-density DNA storage to remember their terraforming instructions. One gram of DNA can store 215 petabytes of information, similar to cells and bacteria. Replicants are being sent to other planets. When left unattended, the number of robots multiplies rapidly. Spacecraft now have biobag chambers on board that function as artificial wombs filled with amniotic fluid, fully supporting the growth of a human embryo. A wormhole, also known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge, is an opening in space created by an incredibly dense supermassive object. It is analogous to putting a bowling ball on a trampoline, but the bowling ball is so dense and heavy that it keeps pulling the middle of the trampoline down. When the bowling ball touches the ground, it is like touching another region of the universe. The advanced multiplanetary civilization of humanity starts debating whether it is necessary to build a megastructure close to the sun because wormholes are notorious for collapsing almost immediately after their formation. If the astronauts can figure out a way to fill the wormhole with exotic matter, the passage could remain open long enough for the spacecraft to pass through. It is a megastructure that functions as a massive parabolic mirror towards the pull of the sun, propelling a complete star system. The majority of the sun's light is reflected back at it by the mirror, giving it forward push. This implies that the solar system's components, including the sun and all of its planets, moons, asteroids, and man-made spacecraft, can be directed along a route determined by humans, ensuring the solar system's security and transforming humanity into a stellar civilization. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.